thought I might look at these uh, optical sensors, optical isolators. So um, this one I'm going to wire up in a minute, the QRD1114. Um, but so I'm going to connect that to the Arduino, I think. But I wanted to talk about these these type of things. So all of these devices basically got the same model. So if we look at this circuit diagram here, so the idea is that on within the package on one side you have a, a, a LED, so you have a LED that you can pass some current through, and on the other side you have an NPN transistor. And the idea here is that the uh, the base of the transistor is activated when there's light on here. So what you've got here is a switch where when you put the light on here, this can switch on. And there are a number of different reasons for doing this. So, for example, there's a um, you know, straightforward isolator. So I've got one on here. I think it's this one here the CNY17. So the CNY17 is a, a pure isolator. So there's no, you can't, you can't see that there's a, a LED and a transistor in there. So the light can't get out in any way. So this is purely so that on one side you've got the LED that you can light and on the other side you've got the transistor that acts as a switch. And um, you quite often see these inside things like power supplies because there's a very high insulation between the, uh, the 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 LED and the transistor. It's something in the thousands of volts. So what you can do in a power supply, for example, is you can safely wire up the LED to the uh, the low voltage side where, where you're going to plug in something like a, a mobile phone. And then on the high voltage side, you can have the transistor and it's quite safe to do that because there's a big, you know, voltage isolation between the two. So, as I say, they use that in power supplies. So this is often used as a way to uh, regulate the flow of electricity and control the primary from the secondary. So these are quite useful devices. And in, in fact, I've used one of these in a design that I put in a in a shed here. So the idea was to have a, the Arduino set off an alarm when the when the power went off in the shed. So I had the primary connect to the LED on, on this side and then the secondary, which, which could also be battery powered, would then uh, signal on a pin to the Arduino when the main power had gone out. So, um, so I still have that wired up today and it, it sends a text to my mobile phone uh, whenever the power goes off in the shed. So that's so that's uh, a pure uh, opto isolator or opto coupler. Uh, and the CNY17, unlike some, it actually this one actually has an extra pin. So there's actually a pin so you can directly trigger the base if you want to as well. Most most of these type of things don't have that. So the other one that you see quite a lot is this kind of slotted sensor. So this one was the H22A1, which is, describes itself as a slotted optical switch. So the idea is that this side with the cutout here has got a LED in it, and this side here has got a photo transistor, and there's a slot in between. So there, there is actually a hole there where the light can get out. So of course, um, you know, the idea here is that you've You've got a. Uh, you can detect. You can detect when something goes into the slot. So I think I might have demonstrated this on the channel before. So when you have something goes into the slot, it breaks the the light beam, and therefore you can detect that something's in the slot. So obviously, with a a bit of engineering, you know, you can you can have something traveling through the slot, or you can have a a disc with a cutout, and that allows you to you know, to, to detect when there's a rotation or a movement. And in fact, I think this particular one came out of a printer. So I think I took, took this out of a printer that I tore down. But there's another similar one here, which I took out of some piece of equipment. 
and here I, I think this is just like a plastic um, molding and there's actually a separate uh, photo transistor and a lead and in fact if you look in the end there that looks very much a lead on this side uh, although I won't wire it up because it might not be might not even be visible light so I'm not sure there'll be anything to see and on this board there's there's a tiny resistor there as well which is obviously the uh, current limiting resistor for the lead and it says 221 on it which so so that means it's a 220 ohm um, resistor so that's a reasonable level of resistance if this was going to be like a 5 volt or 10 volt circuit something like that but the one that I'm going to look at in detail today is this one here so the QRD1114 so this one on the end here you can see so there's a, a visible lead there so there's a red bit and then the black bit is also an NPN transistor so the idea here is, is that it reflects so when when something goes past the sensor and reflects the light it reflects the light that's come out of the lead and bounced off into the sensor so I'm going to connect this up to the Arduino and I'm going to have a go at detecting things that are passing the sensor and like I say all, all of these circuits basically work in the same way so uh, on the the business end where we're going to connect the Arduino you have um, an NPN transistor so typically what you're going to do here is you're going to connect a load resistor so this goes to 5 volts for example um, and the other the other end here we're going to connect to ground and then this also becomes the output of the circuit so so basically if the transistor is off then uh, the output is pulled up to 5 volts so you get a 5 volt signal when there's no light visible but if there is light visible then the base of the transistor switches on and the uh, the current flows down through the collector and the emitter to ground and then this point here gets closer to to ground I don't think it actually gets to ground I think there's like uh, one one volt voltage drop across the the collector emitter um, so that, so um, so when this is lit you get one volt here and when it's not lit you get five volts so that's the theory so we're gonna we're gonna connect this up to an Arduino port I think uh, I'll connect it to an analog port and then we can measure what the voltage actually is on that pin you see the camera here can see a faint purple light because the the camera is sensitive to uh, infrared light so you can you can actually see this through the camera whereas here with the naked eye I can't see anything happening there when I uh, when I play with the uh, the power pin here so I've got a quite simple script running and um, so this is printing out the the reading from the analog to digital converter so you can see it's reading about 4 460 something like that and if I cover up the sensor slightly it goes to a higher reading and what happens if I put this metal ruler in front this is supposed to be reflecting the uh, the infrared light but actually reads a higher value so I think the problem here is that it reacts to uh, to the daylight it's not just sensitive to um, inf infrared so if I shine the torch on it see the reading goes right down to 30 or so so it's sensitive to visible light so 
it may be that I can't really do this experiment in the daytime because this is a very bright room here and it's obviously just reacting to the to the light falling on the sensor well, that's interesting if I put my finger right over it maybe that is reflecting the infrared so if I put a little sleeve black sleeve over it to stop the daylight getting in so now the readings getting to the top of the scale I mean the, the maximum reading should be a thousand and twenty four I think um, so now what happens if I put the reflective ruler in front now you see that's really just blocking out the daylight and I'm getting a higher higher value I think yeah I think we need to do this experiment um, later on um, under electric light so that there's less sort of in incident light because um, I don't think this is really going to work in the daylight Yeah, we'll do the experiment a bit later. So now we've got a fairly steady reading around 990. But if I put a bit of white paper in front, you see that drops down to about 945. So um, out of the direct sunlight, this is actually working and it's reflecting the infrared light um, back into the sensor. if I go really close let's drop down to 700 and something so now I'm going to develop this script a little bit and instead of just printing out the number what I want to do is kind of have a median measurement so that I can tell when the value is um, deviated from uh, from a standard value so let me work on that so here's what I've ended up with. So I've written my own script to do the uh, storing the last 21 values and uh, calculating the median. Uh, and if you have a look in the window here, the output window, if I go in front of the sensor, you'll see it triggers some movement. You can see whenever light gets reflected off, off my hand or off another object I get a series of uh, detections um, so that seems to work quite well and uh, it, it um, will adjust to the amount of background light automatically because it'll settle around the median and um, it's only when the uh, the value changes by about uh, five percent in one go that you you get a detection so to look um, briefly at how this script works so um, I've got this array a which I'm keeping the 20, 20 21 values of um, uh, the last readings in B is a, a sorted version of the same thing so a is in time order if you like and B is in uh, ascending order <clears throat> which means that when you read the center value of B you're getting the median so uh, so I have a bit of setup here so I set up my pin A5 which I'm using as the input for the sensor I put all zeros into array A and then we go into the main control loop so I'm uh, reading the value in t from A5 storing it in the array uh, this this bit of um, uh, modular arithmetic is just that when you get to the end of the array so you get to 21 it wraps back to zero so you've always got uh, the last 21 values in the A array uh, and this function here sorted you can see 
up above how it works um, but basically this takes array A and sorts it into B and this is the you know the number of values in the array so then then you end up uh, if you look at the center value of the B array then um, you're actually getting the median value and this function that I've written which you can also see how it works up above so sufficiently different basically it's just calculating whether median uh, whether reading is 5% different from median so it can be 5% above or below and if it is then this triggers here and we get the printout of the reading and the stars on the, on the output like you've seen and then finally there's a 100 millisecond delay um, such that this loop will execute every 100 milliseconds which seems to be enough to get good response out of the of the system anyway I'm gonna upload the uh, the script up to my github site so um, I'll put the link down below there if you want to download it and mess about with it yourself then you can um, but that's it this is one possible way that you could use one of these infrared light sensors to uh, detect motion uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video